you know, I speak about that I was crying all the way through. Um, but actually, that's not true. I, I was crying, but I was really, really angry. And my anger just continued to multiply all the way through. And, and, and at one point, I remember I, I, I nearly walked away because I was a bit like, this is in the middle of Black Lives Matter. And I'm, I'm dealing with the trauma of all of that. And here I am dealing with a trauma <laughs> here in front of my, I, I can walk away from this one, but I couldn't because you guys did it so well. I kept in. But, but talk, I mean, we could never have guessed that it was going to be aired during a moment of history like, like this. What has the reaction been? And, and I mean, what has the reaction been on a governmental level, if there has been? But before we get there, what, what was the personal reactions that you guys have got, apart from people just saying it's brilliant? How did you negotiate? Did, uh, have you received anger? How, how, did you, how did you negotiate your way through that? Well, for, for me, I mean, I, I, you're right. The, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. And, and the anger, that the collective anger, people are not shy in coming forward to sort of express that. Uh, mostly on social media, where you know it's kind of unfettered, and um, and initially, in, you know, in the first few days after broadcast, you 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 feel like you've succeeded in what you want to do, but there's only, as you quite rightly said, Kwame, there's only so much anger that you can um, process. Um, so after a while, you have to start putting up filters, and I found myself consciously making that decision and trying to step back and trying to look at it as a piece of uh, as a piece of work. Um, and it's in, in the round. So all the things that we've just described, the whole process, and of course the broadcast and so on. But I wrote a piece for the Guardian. I don't know if you managed to, managed to see it, but it was talking about how I came how I came to write it. And I, was, I, I think I said in the piece that somehow, almost by accident, we've ended up with a very very political piece of work. And I, even though we knew when we were doing it that the issues were political, if you like, with a with a with a very big P. Um, I don't think we expected it to be compared to, say, like Cathy Come Home, to have that kind of impact. Mm. And, and that's been a real eye-opener for me. Um, the, the, you know, what a good TV drama can do. Um, um, and, and the reason why I think it's had that impact is because it's been so muted. It was so understated. It wasn't a piece of agitprop mm. or propaganda, or it wasn't, um, you know, trying to beat people over the head. Obviously, it helps that it was based on a true story. So... Um, I found it, to be honest with you, I found it, I think I said to Stella in, at one point in a sort of private conversation, I think, Stella, we have to get used to this. We've actually got a hit film on our hands here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and don't I, we know, all love that's, those that's conversations. That's territory for me. <laughs> don't we love those conversations? <laughs> and me. Yeah. We're so used to going, ah, uh, making excuses for it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. My grandma loved it. Uh, you know, yeah, like, so, it's, so it's been a strange combination of wanting to protect yourself from that kind of, you know, being and put in a position where you're almost like having to sort of relive the 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 the, the anger and all the stuff that you went through when you were making it and enjoying the the impact that it's having, kind of almost schizophrenic in a way. And anybody else a, a reaction to it being aired at that time and and how you've negotiated with 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 I don't know maybe the heat or the coolness that's come back to you. I think for me, it was a, a real eye opener to see the impact that drama can have um, and how it can contribute to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the politics of it, you know, we had, you know, there was uh, the Home Office were trying to view the, the film before it aired. Pretty Patel was calling Anthony and Janet. Wow, Patel, really? I didn't know that. Trying to talk to them. And they said, sorry, we're busy because they hadn't heard from her in ever. So, uh, you know, we had all this like, it was like bubbling up, you know, there was going to be a reaction. There was the government were going to like knew that the film was coming. As it was airing, I was looking on, on uh, Twitter and Pretty Patel was, was uh, commenting about the film. You know, for me, it was just like, it was, it felt. What was she it, saying? Felt, what, what were the comments? Oh, she, was say, she was saying, you know, um, Oh, it's such a tragedy. This this film highlights what what they what the what everyone's gone through and blah blah blah. You know, it was just um, I mean, and and it was trending. Our hashtag was trending, and she actually used it, which I thought was blatant, beer faced. Um, but in a way, in a strange kind of way, it only helped to amplify the the film even more. So yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I've been, you know, it's, it's like, it's very close to all of our hearts, this issue. And, you know, with the death of Paulette Wilson as well, it's just, it becomes, it's become very apparent that uh, the government are really, um, it's just kind of talk in a way because, you know, the, the compensation scheme has come out and it's revealed it's just not good enough. It's just adding insult to injury. Um, a lot, as well, they've got, you know, people that were in the public eye, like Anthony, like Paulette, were, uh, they have the, the ability to give more compensation to some than others. So stories that haven't come out um, in the papers or haven't come out on TV are looking at compensation, which is really not adequate. So, you know, it's really, it really highlights the issues. It really highlights the way this government is behaving. And mm. I'm just super proud that we could be part of that conversation. Yeah. It was really interesting to me, uh, you know, um, in the film, a pretty powerful moment was when there was the repatriation discussion that happened twice, I, I, I believe. First, um, with two characters and then uh, with, with Anthony and um, I can't remember the name of, of, um, of the other character while you were in the detention Th center. Thaddeus. Thank you, Thaddeus. Um, and I, you know, I'm the generation that remembers my parents' trauma around that discussion in the 70s and the 80s when, um, when the National Front had put that on the agenda and people were speaking about it. Um, but I was shocked when I heard the figure that people were being offered, like 2,000 pounds in order to, to go home and do what with two grand? I mean, how do you start your life again? I mean, Incredible. Patrick, you were playing the scene and you played it brilliantly. What was going through your mind when you first read that figure? Maybe you knew it of no, 2K. I didn't. No, I, I didn't know. These are, these are more finite details about actually what happened. So as you go through the, well, as I read the script, I, I, I was incredulous with all the details of what he had to do and what he had to go through. and every single time so when you actually come to just see the man you just go i don't know how you held it together brother i really don't know how you just didn't lose it and you know someone would be dead uh, uh, but there you go that's the dignity and, and this, the resilience of the man you know so yeah those details kwame i mean you know how do you play that <laughs> i know i know i mean like how do you p play here is two grand to go back to a country you haven't been to since you were eight and start again. Yeah. I mean, the outrage of it was- The cruelty it, again. There was a, yes. the, the added cruelty was it was two grand if you self repatriated. If you were forced to repatriate, it was only one grand that you get. Oh. And 20 kilos of luggage. There you go. That's yeah, that's right, the 20 luggage. kilos of luggage. I mean, we're black folk, man. Whoever goes home with only 20 kilos. <laughs> I mean, that's where I'm going for three weeks. I mean, like, I remember, I remember going, what? For my life, 20 kids. I mean, do I take my jacket? Kilos. Do I take my trousers? I mean, what, what, what do I do with 20 kids? <laughs> but that was, the, that was the brilliance of it, was actually, um, it, it, it put me in Anthony's shoes all the way through. I, I kept on saying, what if this were me? Mm. What if this was someone in my family? 